If you're into tech news, you've heard the buzz about Spotify's car thing. Launched in 2021, this $90 device was meant to control Spotify in your car. But with Spotify now built into most cars, the car thing flopped. Spotify slashed the price, discontinued it, and now plans to brick it by December, telling users just toss it in the trash. A lot of journalists and YouTubers are complaining that Spotify refuses to open source the device so it can't be hacked. But here's the thing, that's not true. Before we get started on the truth behind car thing, open sourcing and hacking it, we should briefly cover its history. Spotify first launched it in early 2021 on an invite-only basis. You'd request one, and if chosen, Spotify sent it to you free of charge. Assuming you subscribe to Spotify Premium, of course. It was already a curiosity even then, because a lot of cars had Android Auto and CarPlay, or just Spotify built in. Which is probably why when Spotify fully released it in 2022 for $90, the car thing flopped. The company tried slashing the price, but ultimately discontinued sales and stopped making the device. All of that's fine, because for anyone that bought one, it still works. But now, Spotify says it will brick the devices entirely in December, and you should probably just responsibly throw yours away. That's terrible. But considering it's just a single-use purpose device, why does anyone care? Because honestly, it's kind of nice. It's a handy little piece of hardware with a few buttons, a screen, and even a clicky turn dial. And it can control music played on your phone. And that doesn't even have to be Spotify. It can control YouTube music, as you're seeing now, Apple Music, or basically anything you want over Bluetooth, which makes the Spotify premium requirement a little bit of a kick in the teeth. But think about it. That sounds like a bunch of other handy little devices that exist, like macro pads. And what if you could just turn it into one and not throw it away? According to several sites and YouTubers, that's just not possible because Spotify refuses to open source the thing. But that's not actually true, or the problem. Spotify already open sourced the car thing. No, really, it did. It runs on Linux, which is an open source OS, and Spotify posted the U-boot and Linux kernel source code for this device to GitHub. I don't know why Spotify won't just tell journalists that when they ask for comment about open sourcing it. On top of that, since it uses one of Amlogic's chips, it has an easy access boot rombo. Just press and hold button 1 and 4 while plugging it in. From there, you can use ADB and other commands to run custom code, dump the source code, or even add your own people already have. Basically, the car thing is as open source as it possibly can be. The main thing holding it back is incredibly weak hardware. It runs a weak Amlogic processor, 4 gigabytes of storage, and 512 megabytes, yet yes megabytes, of RAM. It's too weak to run Android or any heavy Linux OS. And I know personally, because for the last week, I've been trying to hack the car things to do other things. So far, I've removed the Spotify premium requirement, although that won't help when Spotify breaks the things, loaded a custom Debian Linux firmware that can do little more than load a single web page, and that's about it. And even then, you need a Raspberry Pi to do some of that. Every other attempt to connect it to a service like MacroDeck has ended in failure, and it's been a lesson in frustration, because the car thing is so underpowered, even loading custom firmware doesn't work all that well. Every attempt takes at least 15 minutes because it can't handle data transfers any faster. And even then, every second or third attempt ends in failure. It loses connection and stops. And don't even think about connecting through a USB hub. That will always completely fail. We can actually compare just how low powered the car thing is to another piece of hardware out in the market, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. That's another low powered device you can buy pretty cheap. And at first glance, the car thing almost comes out ahead. They both run a quad-core 64-bit ARM Cortex A53 CPU, but the Pi is clocked at just 1 GHz, while the car things is clocked in at 1.896 GHz. And they both have the same measly 512 MB of RAM. But that's the end of the good news for the car thing. It has just 4 GB of storage, while the Pi has a microSD card slot, which means you can go much bigger on storage. And the Raspberry Pi has a few other important specs the car thing doesn't, like Wi-Fi, 
a mini HDMI port, and an unpopulated 40-pin header footprint. Basically, anything the car thing can do, the Pi Zero 2W can do better. And when we look at that device, no one is trying to turn one into a super useful full-fledged computer. The Zero 2W is dubbed as perfect for IoT projects, like powering a Bluetooth speaker or a security camera, which again, is possible thanks to having Wi-Fi. You could even potentially use the Pi Zero 2 to give CarThing access to the internet. When you really think about it, the real advantage here to the CarThing is it already has a working touchscreen, buttons, and a turn dial, something you'd have to source for the Pi Zero 2W. But when I think about it, nothing is stopping anyone from turning the Pi Zero into a car thing that Spotify can't kill. And if that sounds like something you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try it. That's the problem. Spotify built a very niche case piece of hardware. It's a tiny touchscreen that can do one thing alone, play a web app that serves as a media player. Anything more is too much for it to handle. Some modders had it working briefly with MacroDeck, an open source MacroPad software, but that failed when MacroDeck added more features and moved to a newer Chromium version than the car thing can handle. All of this is just terrible. There's honestly no good reason for Spotify to brick the car thing. It's just Bluetooth connecting to your phone and displaying a media player. It pulls artwork and details from the Spotify app. And that's my guess on why they're bricking it. So they don't have to maintain the app's compatibility with the device they no longer sell. But it feels like a stark reminder of a modern truth. You don't own anything you buy anymore not even your hardware. Not when a company can just decide to brick it a few years after selling it to you. I hope anyone working on making the car thing into a viable thing keeps trying and finds useful things to do with these devices despite the challenges. But I'm not holding out too much hope. It's really difficult. Even if they did, most people aren't going to know how or have the patience to root this in low custom firmware. It'll probably still end up in the trash. Or if you want, Send yours to me and I'll do something interesting with them, even if it's an e-waste display in my videos. This is the kind of situation that hardware companies, even ones new to the scene, should try to avoid. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tech news and reviews. Stick around at the Enderaker channel, we have a lot of great things coming. Until next time, bye!